A $25 Banggood Sterling engine. Part 2. Making it better and making it pretty. So to make it better I'm gonna try some different things. First is graphite from this uh, 9B pencil. 9B is a very soft kind of graphite. I used these pencils a lot back when I still sketched on paper. Now it's all digital. <laughs> now graphite has very nice lubricating properties. I'm gonna try to use it to smooth things up a bit. Later I'll replace this with PTFE spray. So for the second improvement I'm gonna try to make a second regenerator. I'm gonna use this uh, steel mesh wire that I still had lying around from my uh, DIY electronic drums. And this uh, second regenerator goes into the side hole of the engine. Make sure it doesn't touch the piston or the displacer cylinder, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's not gonna work. <laughs> okay, time to see how this works. You'll see me using a lighter to run the engine. I still haven't bought bioethanol, I really should do that. Yeah, the engine is running okay, but I think I can still do better. Okay, next idea. Deburring all the holes. Of course, as usually, I don't have the appropriate tools to do this, so I'm using scissors to deburr the uh, piston rod holes. Probably not the best way to go about this, but it did end up working. Okay, it's time to get serious. I got some PTFE spray and bioethanol. Time to run this properly. The little uh, refueler that was supplied with the engine works okay. <laughs> it's a little bit messy, but uh, luckily bioethanol is easy to clean up. Okay, time to apply the PTFE spray. I'm just coating every moving part in PTFE. Uh, it's a little bit too much in places. I should uh, learn to moderate a little bit. But trying this by hand, I already feel that the engine is a lot smoother. One little piece of advice. Don't put PTFE spray on the brass cylinder, the power piston. The power piston works best when dry. Oh, and don't forget to put the side hole screw back in there. It definitely helps with the engine actually working. Okay, test number two. Let's see how it runs. Well, look at it go. It definitely runs a lot faster now. In fact, my entire table is shaking. Another thing I immediately noticed is that it runs much quieter as well. Much less uh, metal on metal noise. Now, of course, I wondered what the torque was of this thing. But let's try it out. The good old finger test. Yeah, feels decently powerful, actually. I'm quite surprised. I am truly growing ever so fond of this engine. And here's a little impromptu experiment. I have these ice packs that I well, usually use when I burn a finger when I'm soldering or whatever. But uh, yeah, let's try it out to cool down the power piston. Create more difference between the hot and the cold side. Let's see how it runs. Definitely makes a difference. Okay, now it's time for the real test. Let's put a load on it. Of course I'm using Legos again because it's ever so versatile to use for these kind of things. Yeah, that wasn't a success. Uh, time to try something different. Okay, first a lighter load, something a bit more manageable. That's doing it just fine, of course, because we have quite a speed reduction and therefore a power increase. Or should I say torque increase. Okay, now with a heavy brass flywheel. That handles it quite well. But there's no real test like a test without any reduction. And actually, there it goes. Going quite fast even. Oops, ah, those damn flat belts. They're always an issue. <laughs> okay, time for an even heavier load. This thing. 
whatever it is. It's just some random gears and wheels to add a little bit more friction and thus more torque needed to actually get it going. And to keep it running. Which, by the looks of it, it does just fine. Okay, I think that's enough of the uh, torque and uh, performance tests. It's time to make the engine prettier, now that it runs better. I already had the design in mind, so I took the engine apart, and now I'm first gonna tackle the base. Of course, I first need some things. Then paper, tape, paints, all sorts of paints. Got spray paints, acrylic, gouache, and some uh, miscellaneous uh, brushes. And of course, with painting comes sanding, because you need to clean the surface first. In this case, I need to remove the old paint from the base. It's, uh, it's kind of ugly and to my surprise, there's actually very shiny steel underneath. So after sanding and uh, taping off the bits that shouldn't be painted, I've applied some primer. I'm gonna do multiple layers and then I can paint it. So I want to give a bit of a classic uh, vibe to this engine. So I'm using copper colored gouache. It actually works quite well, it looks quite convincing. Of course I'm going to need to put a layer of varnish over it later, because gouache is uh, quite sensitive to humidity. Here you can see I also tried out some color combinations with different paints. I think I have a pretty clear idea of what I want to do now. So let's get going. First I gotta finish the copper parts, before I do the rest. Okay, so the hot part of the engine, where the flame is, I'm gonna paint black. This is to hide any charcoal coming from the flame. And, well, it looks pretty cool as well. Okay, that's the first part of the base done. Before I add the rest, I'm gonna focus on the cylinder housing as well. I've already sanded it and coated it in primer, so it's ready for painting. The main engine housing I will also paint in the copper gouache. I just think it's a really classy looking paint. Or maybe I just have a really bad taste. Time will tell I guess. Speaking of bad taste and about classy, I still have a bunch of those uh, little wood planks I use for that boiler. And they look very nice, so I thought it was a really cool idea to use that for the flooring. And here you can see that I've done the first bit. But again, before I can continue with that, I gotta do something about the flywheel. And that needs a special construction. Namely this thing. The thing about the flywheel is, I want to sand it. I already discovered from sanding the base that there's actually very shiny and pretty steel under there. So, to do this, I need the flywheel to rotate at decently high speeds. So I built this contraption. <laughs> again, Legos. It's so useful. And as you can see, it is working. The flywheel is slowly getting shinier and shinier. Plus, I won't get any weird sanding patterns and it will be very even this way. Which is something I definitely want on a flywheel. Well, and here's the end result. Looking quite good. I think it's about ready for painting now. Those holes on one side are a little bit unfortunate. I'm not sure if I can do something about that, but it doesn't bother me greatly. So after some sanding and more primer, here is uh, the first attempt at painting. <laughs> it's a little bit sloppy. So after having put the flywheel on my little Lego contraption again, sanding it some more, here's the engine in its current state. I'm actually quite happy with these results. I mean, this is the first time I'm doing this kind of paint uh, work on a model. Let alone all the sanding and uh, well, all the improvisations I needed to do for this. So I'm quite happy with these results, oh yes. Okay, on to the next thing. I want to make a little bit of housing around the uh, flame area with a little chimney. I think that would look really cool, as well as isolate the heat a little bit better. And yes, that does mean it's gas burner time again, and I have a different cheapo one. Uh, this one is actually a little bit better. It uh, uses uh, a standard uh, cigarette lighter, which you can uh, put into the base. And it actually uses that to generate the flame. So, um, yeah, it's easier to refill since I can just refill cigarette lighter. 
and it also seems to work a lot better than the previous one. So let's see how it holds up. In the meantime you can see me sizing up the two parts that need to solder together. So let's try it. Well it worked out decently well. Um, I'm still not super great at soldering that's for sure. One side turned out pretty okay actually this side. But the other side uh, just kind of have a little nip of solder. As you can see I drilled holes in the top for the heat to flow through. This is where the chimney goes. The chimney is actually nothing more but a copper tube connector. Yeah, nice to use pre-made stuff. Now, unfortunately, my camera batteries died while I was uh, soldering, so I don't have any footage of that. Here's the finished piece. As you can see, the soldering job isn't great, but it is on there sturdily. So right now I'm applying a coat of primer, so I can paint this part black. Uh, the same kind of black I used for the base. And here it is. Okay, time for test run number three. Here is the engine put together with all the newly painted and made parts. As you can see, I added a little bit of copper tubing to the uh, refilling hole of the ethanol uh, burner. Uh, that made it a little bit easier to uh, refill the thing without having to take the lid off the ethanol burner since the whole uh, firebox construction and chimney construction is on top of there. And luckily the engine also still runs well. I was worried that a rather thick layer of gouache and varnish paint would hamper the engine's ability to cool down. But it seems rather okay actually. Okay, I think that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something from it. I certainly did. Don't forget to subscribe or like this video, it does help. And I'll see you guys next video. Bye bye!